Hola, ¿qué tal? Saludos y bienvenidos a estas entrevistas de cara a lo que puede venir en la Copa de la Reina. Y hoy tenemos a Marie Gulitz de Valencia Basket. Marie, welcome. Hello. First of all, taking in mind the Queen's Cup is coming, I will ask you how how do you feel the team que arrives to the to this time of the of the season, especially after you had an impressive performance in the Eurocup Women, but then you have many many games without play due to COVID situations, you especially also suffered, you wouldn't be able to go to the national team also. How was that for all of you in, in this situation to arrive to this competition, to this special competition? I think um, that we're almost back to normal, I would say. I think a lot of us are still suffering a little bit. Like, I know for myself, sometimes I just like, I still feel like I had COVID. Um, But I think the club did an amazing job helping us out to like really get back into shape and really helping us to like understand um, that we were sick and that it takes time to get back. I think that takes a lot of patience and grace of like for all of us. And um, I, I'm excited though for the cup now that it's coming. And um, I'm also excited that we had some time to really refocus, regroup and like figure things out. And I think we're really on a good way and like we've been playing really well. And um, it's just fun to be back finally and to like have the team together again, all of us. So um, I think we're all very excited for this. Comenta un poco que de cara a lo que les pasó con el COVID y que el club ha ayudado mucho a ellos, les ayudaba a entender la situación, todo lo que tenían que recuperarse y, y cómo poder volver a, a cierta normalidad que dice que han podido recuperar en, ahora en, de cara a una copa que, que se prevé interesante, que tiene muchas ganas, que está muy, muy emocionada de ello y que, que es un torneo divertido que, que quiere disfrutar. Marie, unfortunately this season there will be no fans, but uh, I don't know if you know this, but when, when the WNBA season started, many people here from Valencia asked to, to some others and to me, how to watch your games in the WNBA. I don't know if you had enough contact with any fans to, to let you know this or to feel that uh, passion that have for, for a player of Valencia basket and how exciting could be for you when the fans came back and how the fans will be supporting you instead of not being in the arena. Um, I did not know that. That's really um, exciting news. That makes me happy um, for the future. Sure, there's a WNBA app and you can purchase um, <laughs> um, a package deal. It's not really expensive, so you can watch all the games. Um, and also, I'm like, <laughs> I'm happy that we have a, like some fans in the arena a little bit. Sometimes we have like um, a band, I would say, like playing the drums and there's music and it has some type of feel in the arena. Um, But um, it's definitely different to play without fans, to not have that crowd. And I've like obviously heard really, really good things about the um, fans in Valencia and the atmosphere in the gym. And um, I'm a little sad that I can't experience that this season, but um, what I've experienced so far with the support from the fans, the people who are like just so supportive and excited to see us play and just like, no matter what and how we play, they're just always happy. And um, I think that's just already proven that if this wouldn't be a season during a pandemic, then this would be really, really cool. Oh, eh, great. Eh, hablaba de que está feliz de que los aficionados, cuando ella, ella estaba en la WNBA y ya se sabía que iba a ser jugadora de Valencia Basket, lo, la siguieran. Ella recomienda las, las vías oficiales para seguir la, la temporada. También habla de, de lo divertido que es tener a la banda de vez en cuando animando. Lo di lo diferente que es que no haya público en las gradas, que ella tenía muy buenas referencias de lo que es la afición de Valencia, de lo que se vive en la, en la fonteta, una fonteta que de vez en cuando tiene afición y, y eso también es, es emocionante y es interesante. Y la atmósfera que se vive, todo lo que apoya a la afición, por lo tanto ella espera que, que puedan volver en algún momento, pero de momento sigue notando y también desconocía ese hecho de que la gente estuviera siguiéndola cuando ella estaba con, con el equipo americano. Eh, 
Mari, also another player you know, not playing she this this season in the WNBA, but for sure the people will follow her. Also, it's Rebecca Allen. She, you were teammate of her also in Guinea. You have a good synergy, at least what we see from you and her on on the court, especially in your first dates after after came back of of LA Sparks. How is to be able for you in this situation that we are all living? Have a person of, like Rebecca being a teammate of you again and being the main player of the team? Um, I'm really happy about it. I mean, Rebecca and I are not only just getting along on the court, like we're really good friends off the court as well. So it's just good to have a person you can hang out with. And um, we have this thing, we love coffee. So that's like a passion we both share. So uh, we always go get coffees together and hang out and, um, I think on and off the court, I'm just really, really thankful for her. Um, I think we both are really, we just know each other really well now after two seasons. So um, I'm happy that she's here. And um, yeah, I, <laughs> I think you can see that. <laughs> Como podéis ver, es lo último que decía, ella está muy contenta de tener a una jugadora con, como Rebeca Allen, que comparte muchas cosas dentro y fuera de la pista, como también se puede ver en sus redes sociales, como se puede mostrar también la pista, que es una persona que le ha ayudado mucho, que al final es una persona que conoce ya de Guinea, de la anterior temporada, que para ella dos temporadas seguidas ya les ha hecho tener una buena conexión y es muy importante de cara a lo que puede llegar en los, en los próximos años, ojalá. Eh, a little bit asking for, for you, because as I mentioned it a little bit, when you arrived from the WNBA, you had an amazing performance. I remember the game against Zaragoza and say, wow, she already ar arrived and, he, and it's making a really good game. Then you have like a, a little valley of performance. And then before the COVID, you, you recovered. And now you are also in good performance, as we see again Zamora yesterday. How was that for you, the season in global, taking in mind that peaks of of performance and values? Um, I think coming from the WNBA, um, I was injured during that time and during the WNBA. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were, there were a lot of high, highs in time to really like adapt and um, also Get, getting back to like really trusting my body. I wasn't fully recovered from my injury. And I, I know I had a really good first game. I think that's just that really that adrenaline that like kicks in first game. Like you really want to like show what you can do. And um, obviously I wanted to do that the next couple of games as well, but it was a little harder for me to just really um, get back into a rhythm um, after all of that. Um, thankfully, like once again, like the coaches here are really patient and um, the club is really supportive and um, there was never coming a lot of pressure. So um, they gave me time to really like find my way. And I think that that's why I was able to like really work myself up to that peak performance again and really getting back into like the shape I wanted to be in. And obviously COVID didn't play into my game plan a little bit, but um, yeah, I think those are just like, little bumps in the road that you just have to like handle and get over with. And um, I'm happy that I'm here and I'm happy that I uh, have so much support. And um, I hope that I can continue like having like good performances for this club. Ella, le preguntamos un poco por esos picos y esas bajadas de rendimiento que ha tenido. Ella también hablaba un poco de los problemas físicos que arrastraba, sobre todo a principio de temporada. Luego también llegó ese, ese, esa bajada por lo que decía que tenía que parar un poco. Luego volvió a subir, estaba a buen nivel, bajó de rendimiento por el COVID y estuvo parada también por el COVID y ahora en, las últimas, en los últimos partidos ha vuelto a, a demostrar el nivel que tenía y está muy contenta que el club le haya podido ayudar al respecto y que le haya podido dar la opción de sentirse ella misma y tener su propio, propio estilo, su, propio, su propia vía para poder recuperarse poco a poco. María, also I will ask you a little bit for... For your face last, uh, not last game, but in the game against Girona, that probably could be a, an option for the finals. You faced Julia Rysingerova, a, a player that was last season in Valencia in your same position. How was how was that matchup individually for you? Um, <laughs> I think that was the first game playing back from COVID, where that was the first game where we had really be had to be physical and. 
I think it all like it hit me at first, like the first couple minutes in the game, how physical it really was because I wasn't really like, like I mentally I was prepared, but physically I wasn't really like I was like whoa okay, um, she's a really strong player. She's um, very physical, um, not easy to defend once she's in the paint. So um, I love those challenges though. Uh, I know that um, it just makes me better. So. Um, I love playing against players like that. So I don't know. I think she's a very good player. So it's like always good to play against someone like that. Le preguntaba un poco por ese duelo que tuvo con Julia Reisingerova, que era la jugadora que estaba en Valencia Basket el año pasado en su misma posición. Eh, decía que eso que volviendo al COVID, a pesar de que fue hace poco y en el último partido estuvo bien, era un duelo sobre todo físico, como se puede ver al principio del partido, que la checa le superó físicamente y poco a poco fue mejorando ella en un, en un duelo que dice que le motiva a tener grandes rivales así, que eso le ayuda a mejorar. Mari, eh, to, to close it a little bit, eh, after you don't being able to, to help the national team of German to qualify for the Eurobasket in Valencia uh, because of COVID in some, some point, especially in the last window, what, which are your, your goals until the end of the season? What, uh, what do, do you expect about take a title or achieve a title with Valencia Basket in your first season in the club? Um, that's definitely on my mind. I mean, not qualifying for Eurobasket um, was, <laughs> I mean, that was hard just not to be there with the team. I know um, that German national team had a lot of um, injuries and people that couldn't come that would have really helped us to win. It wasn't just me missing. So um, it was just hard to see. And I really wanted, like, that was one of my goals to play in Eurobasket this summer because um, we haven't done that in a while with the German national team. Um, that was definitely disappointing. But nevertheless, when I signed the contract here, um, the goal is to make this team a Euroleague team again. And that's what I'm thinking about as a player. I want to play at the highest level and I want to play Euroleague. And in order to do that, you just have to, like, win the league and um that's that has been on my mind i think that's really a goal for me to like um help this team to, to reach that point le preguntamos un poco por cómo se sentía ella después de al final no haber estado con la selección por el covid por que yo también haya influido en no clasificarse al eurobasket de este verano con una de las sedes siendo valencia nos decía que al final tanto tiempo sin estar a Alemania en, la, en este tipo de eventos y ella también tenía ilusión de hacerlo, era un momento complicado, pero desde el momento en el que ella firmó por Valencia Basket, ella también le preguntamos por cómo afrontaba este tramo final de temporada, ella espera que de volver al equipo Euroliga, poder ganar un título si se da la situación y, y seguir trabajando para hacer grande al proyecto y, y ver qué puede pasar. Mari, best of the luck in, in the cup and will be there covering what you can do in, in this tournament in your first apparition. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. A todos ustedes, Bye. como ya les decimos, esta es su casa. Pueden volver siempre que quieran. Un saludo y hasta la próxima.